My name is Michael Phelan. I'm the principal of uh, Go to Market Pros here in Boston, um, and uh, I have a background in terms of uh, sales and marketing at both large companies and emerging tech companies. And about seven years ago, I formed my own company, Go to Market Pros, and it was all around helping marketers and sales professionals, executives form a, a, a really strong go to market strategy, um, really understanding how to cut through to the clutter, um, how to kind of bypass um, and engage with buyers when you're up against competitors who have very large budgets, large inside sales teams, and maybe your brand is not as established as other brands. Um, so I work with both companies that are merging growth companies in the US, and I also work with companies that are coming into the US market from outside. Generally, they have a small uh, sales and marketing team, or maybe it's just one person um, and a small budget. And they really have a great product, but a lot of these big buyers, especially enterprise buyers, you know, they're not gonna meet with them, they're not gonna engage with them because um, they don't know them. Um, and they don't have the firepower, the sales firepower or the marketing firepower. In some cases, they've got much better product um, than what's out there. So, so I use a methodology um, that I call magnet marketing to help them engage with the buyers. So what I do is I reach out to the buyers and I, I'll conduct a, a genuine study on best practices. Right now I'm doing one on best practices on co-op and vendor marketing at major retailers. So I'll reach out to the retailers, I'll invite them into the study, I'll pay them for their time. And when they come on to the call, they, the, the sponsor will be there and it's generally a senior sales or marketing exec at my client. Um, I will interview the prospect for 15 minutes. What are you doing now? How are you solving this problem? What are the best practices? What are your challenges? What do you want to do in the future? What's on your roadmap? Meanwhile, my clients get incredibly smart about that account and what they're struggling with and their pain points. Um, and then we'll offer some some suggestions, some solutions, some best practices, um, which has a gift card, which they're always going to open up because it's got a cash gift card. Um, and it's got information that they can bring into the office the next day, share with their colleagues. And meanwhile, my client will be associated with content that will help solve these buyers' problems. So it starts with the prospect call and ends with prospect-centric marketing. Um, and it's really inbound marketing in reverse, and it allows companies with smaller budgets to engage in meaningful conversations with buyers. Sometimes it's early stage sales identification. Sometimes it's determining if that particular account is a real prospect for you. Sometimes it's understanding what's going on from a competitive environment. Um, and sometimes it's really collecting uh, authentic content for content marketing. It combines about four different disciplines. It combines an analyst program with content marketing, with early stage sales identification um, and best practices research. So it's a combination of four different disciplines that come together to get meaningful conversations with smaller emerging growth companies and larger prospects. The first step is to get a client to understand the methodology of magnet marketing. Um, it's a little bit different um, and for people who are used to very defined things and very standard ways of going to market with B2B marketing, uh, it takes a little bit of explaining. But once they kind of get the concept um, of that this gets you net new meetings with highly targeted prospects and from an account-based marketing perspective, um, they'll get it. So uh, how I get clients is a lot of times I do a lot of work in retail and e-commerce. Um, there are about 8,000 different companies targeting the top 100 e-commerce uh, and retailers, e-commerce companies and retailers. So anybody from, say, a Home Depot to an Amazon to a Walmart to a Chico's, you know, any kind of major retail brand. Um, so there are a lot more people trying to sell them than there are buyers. So anybody that's in that market understands the difficulty and frustration of getting these kind of meetings, getting these kind of appointments. Um, and as much as they may have good sales and marketing efforts, a lot of times people will not respond to vendors because there's just too many of them. So, so it's about really kind of getting the client to listen and understand a, a methodology, finding a client that will try something new. Um, and if there's some domain uh, knowledge that I have, 
where I, I've done some work, say, in marketing personalization, or I've done some work in uh, CDPs, customer data platforms. I've done work in terms of high-performance advertising, social media. So if, I, if I've done some work in the space, and I know the retailers, and I know their competitors, that's always a plus. Um, but like any consulting, you have to make sure, or any agency business, that you work hard on keeping your name, uh, on promoting on LinkedIn, on you know, being in the right forums. Um, but what I find is most successful is where you have a client that understands that difficulty and, and has tried everything um, and is open to something new and you have the domain knowledge, you have some experience with relevant industry um, competitors. So that's kind of that, that side of things. When I Then when I reach out to the retailers, um, I do a lot of it via LinkedIn um, and uh, I'll typically you know, try and connect with them. You know, I'm going to do a study on the following. You look like a good fit. Will you connect with me? I'll give you more details on the study. So as they connect with me, that's building my database of contacts into that vertical, into that network. Um, I'll invite them into the study. Then I'll coordinate. I'll actually book the appointment. Uh, and it's easy for my client sales team because all they have to do is show up. Um, there's a lot of people doing lead gen services. There's a lot of people doing meeting services, but they don't actually manage the meeting for the client. Video is, is, is something that I haven't done a lot of, but should do more of. Um, I, I think it's it certainly all the stats will say um, that video on LinkedIn, for example, is much more effective. So I, I did my first blog recently, um, not blog, I did my first podcast recently, and, and we got good views on that. Um, but not everybody, you know, can you have, have this special software to do it. And it's, it's, it's a little bit more involved. Um, and um, so I, I think video could be a good way for me to do that. But some of the things that I do today is um, I post a lot of relevant content to my audience. So if I'm working on a, a program and it's around marketing personalization and retail, um, I, will, I will gather a lot of content and share a lot of content around that topic. Um, so not always writing it myself, um, but curating it for my network so that they kind of see me as somebody that has a passion for that topic uh, and is, is proactively sharing information and has a good knowledge for that. So when I come up to them and say, I'd like to do a study on the topic, I, they have some awareness of me around that. They know it's just not a random reach out. You know, this guy is, comes out of retail. He's very much involved. I, I do host panels as well. So I'll have panels and, and dinners and things like that. So I'll be on panels or I'll host panels. I'll go to shows like the NRF, which is the National Retail Federation, and I'll host a panel of retailers and we'll invite you know people to come and hear what they're talking about. So I think that's good. I think for agencies, the event stuff, if done well, can be very good. Um, I, I think that uh, you know either moderating panels or hosting panels um, face to face, I think is one of the best ways of doing it. Um, but also being at the forums that are discussing topics to make the product more tangible, and I think that helps on the you know on the client side where they where they know exactly what they're getting and what they're buying and what other people have bought. And of course, references are a big part of that. I, I put all my references on LinkedIn um, so people can see all the clients that I've worked with um, and a lot of people are not comfortable with that but I, I think that's that's really good so anytime I do a project I'll have the customer do a reference and, and then everybody can see all the references online it gives them a sense of comfort that they're there and they're public and there's no kind of difficulty getting at that information and they can always reach out to anybody who's a reference directly as well um, but I think that you know reducing risk and making feel, people feel that they're buying a tangible, proven product offering um, is important in the services business.